Hey guys, welcome to Lara Tips. In today's video, I'll be showing you 10 VS Code extensions that will help you increase your productivity. So let's get started. First of all, guys, I'll show you how to take the screenshot of a code that you might have seen in Twitter or Facebook that some developers are sharing by showing good screenshots. So let me show you that first. So you have to install an extension called Code Snap. So this is this extension. So you have to install this extension first. And after installing this extension, just hit Control Shift P on Windows or Linux or Command Shift P on Mac. And whenever I say Control, it's Command for Mac. Okay. So here I'll say Code Snap like this and I'll hit Enter and it will show it on the right hand side. And whatever we select on the left hand side, it will show on the right hand side guys. And you can see here guys, it will look like this. The screenshot will look like this and whenever we click on this shutter icon then it will save this in a file so if i say click on this like this then you can see here guys it is showing me window where i can save this file and guys you can also change a lot of things regarding this screenshot so let me go to the settings first so let me just keep it like this and now if i go in the settings like this so let me just decrease the font size so that i can see the extension icons over here so here guys you can see a code snap over here and you can see here guys you can change this background color this this background color will change the background color of this one and you can also change the box shadow which will change this shadow and here guys container padding is 3m which is the distance from this border to this border so if you increase this then it will increase this border also and here guys you can also show the line numbers and rounded corners so let me show you guys here it is a little bit rounded and if i click on here and if i go again back to our previous file then you can see here guys the borders are not rounded but let me keep it rounded corner and i can also show the line numbers if i click on here like this and if i come here it is showing me the line numbers but if i click on this real line numbers and if i come here then it will show me an actual line number of this file so let me just remove those and this also and this show windows control display OS X style windows controls means this guys this one so this is just like Mac OS and if I just disable it and come back here now we can see here guys it is also gone now so if you don't want that then you can just uncheck it and it will be gone similarly guys if you want to show the windows style over here at the top then just click here check mark and whatever this name of the file it will show up here this bootstrap.js and guys, I'll not go through all the options over here. You can just check it out. Now let me close this. And now let us move to the second extension, which is file utils. And guys, this is this extension. If I click on here and I can show you guys over here. So this is the extension. And we can do a bunch of things by using these files. We don't have to open this explorer. So let me show you guys. Suppose let's say we want to create a new file over here. So we don't have to open this explorer and click on here and again do this. First of all, we need to install this extension. After that, we can just come here and just press on Control Shift P or Command Shift P and file utils. Then you can see here a bunch of commands here. So let me just new and I'll select this related to the current view. And here guys, it is showing me this current. Okay, I have to select this. Let's say there are other folders inside this same folder, then it will show up that also. Now, if I click on here, then it will give me the path of this directory. And then I can just say, let's say here article.js. And now you can see here, guys, it is created over here. And there are also other options like you can just duplicate this file. And let's say we want to duplicate this file and we can say, let's say blog like this. And you can see here, guys, the same file has been duplicated over here. And let's say you want to delete this file, then we'll say delete and you can see our file utils delete just click on it then that file will get deleted and also guys there is a move file move and let's say you wanted to move this article to let's say blog slash article so just a random file name guys here guys it will create a blog folder and it will move that to this blog folder with the article name and here guys there are a bunch of other options and you can just go through each and every options and test it out with the help of this extension guys we don't have to open the file explorer we can create move duplicate or copy any file just using the keyboard now guys let's move to the third extension which is yes code icons and it is this extension guys with the help of this extension guys all the icons in our explorer will look pretty so first of all let me disable this and let me reload 
Now guys, if I come here in the explorer, they are not pretty. And also let me show you guys here inside the view files this. There are some files. It is not even recognizing these files and it is just showing this icon over here. But if we just install this BS code icons, here I'll enable it. And if I go to this explorer, now you can see here guys, it is looking much more cleaner and it is recognizing all the files and you can see here guys, all these icons are added in front of the file names and and guys it will be very easier for us to recognize the file type by just looking at them now let's move to the fourth extension which is git graph and it is this extension guys the git graph and it has a bunch of feature guys and i'll show you a few of them and you can easily explore so after installing this extension guys you will see something in the status bar so let me just enable the status bar so you can see here, this is the status bar at the bottom and here guys you will see this git graph and whenever I click on this git graph, it will show me all the commits that have ever made in the project. Now if I just click here on the uncommitted changes then it will show me all the files that have been changed currently and they are not committed. And whenever I click on any one of the files, it will show me the difference. So let me hide this extension. Now we can share guys, it is showing me this plus icon, it's showing me this. It is added over here and this thing is added. Okay, we can see what things has been changed. And also guys, you can see here all the comments. So now let's say we want to go to this part and let's say, and we want to see what has been changed on this save model file. Then if I just click on here, then again guys, you can see here, all these things have been deleted and this thing has been added over here so it will be very easy to debug if something goes wrong in our application so not only this guys we can also see the stats over here whatever things that have been stats and if i right click on here we can just click on apply stats and that stats will be applied not only this guys we can just right click on here add a tag to a specific branch or we can cherry pick or just create a new branch from there or copy the commit has and there are much more things and you can also see the date when the commit has been done and who has returned the commit similarly the commit has is also shown over here and guys you can also source for the commit from here let's say i want to source for auto save then you can see here guys it is highlighting all those commits that have auto save in them and here guys on the left hand side you can also see all the branches and you can easily see the name of the branch also like this auto database save or save model all these branches very easily and you can see here guys this name of the branch and this timeline will match whatever things we have done in that branch will show in that color now let's move on to the fifth extension which is git lens and this is the mother of all extension for a developer guys since we are developer we must use git because using git will have a lot of power we can just move to the one point of time if something goes wrong in the current deployment and there are many more things that we can do with git so i have included one more extension related to the git which is git lens and now let me show that extension name and it is this extension guys so after just after you install this extension you will see this let me show you over here in the dashboard controller so you will see this guys you three weeks ago and this commit so it is showing me that I have written this commit three weeks ago and let's say there are many more members in your project then it will show exactly what commit they have done at the exact line. Suppose let's say there was another member who did some commit at this line then you can easily look here who has done commit and at what time. So this is the very useful feature that everyone wants if they are working on a team. And guys at the top of the file name it will show you this you six minutes ago and one author it will show the latest time that the file has changed and it will show the number of authors that have changed a file so currently there is only one author which is me and guys in a project which has a lot of teams it will show all those person who have changed these files and if you click here it will show all the commits and who have changed and it will show their picture whatever their picture is in the GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, whatever project that we have set up, it will show their image over here. So it will be very easy to know who have done which commit. And also guys, there is one more thing. Let's say you just want to see whatever thing that has changed on this file. So currently, let's say there are a bunch of things that has changed in this file. Then we just want to know what things has changed on this file. Then you can just click on this icon over here. 
and you can see here guys it is showing me these things have been added by showing this plus icons over here and let's say now we want to see what things were changed even before then we can again click on this icon it will show me all the changes that have been done even before and if you again click on this file guys then it will again show me all the changes done earlier you can just go on and on and on and it will show all the changes specific to this file to the point where it was created so now let me close all the changes. Now let's move to the sixth extension which is Turbo Console Log. And with the help of this extension, we can easily log to the console. So let me go to this bootstrap.js guys. And let's say I only want to console log this window.pusher. So what we would do is just copy this and we'll say console.log will type all the thing and we'll just log it okay but whenever you install this console turbo log and if i show you guys over here we can just press this control alt l or command alt l then it will automatically log that variable and guys here i want to log this windows.pusher i'll say control alt l then you can see here guys it has automatically logged and it will also add the line number and the file name along with that variable it will be very easier for us to debug and let's say i want to log this as well then you can see here guys it has logged it over here we can just select the variable that we want to log and then hit the control alt l and then it will automatically log now let's move to the seventh extension which is import cost and it is this one guys with the help of this extension you can easily see whenever you import a package into your file how much size will it take so let me go here in the bootstrap and guys you can see here guys whenever i imported or required this load as it took 69.2k space or its size is 69.2k and whenever we gzip it it will be 24.4k and you can also see here guys for the axios also it is giving me this size and also guys here if you see here in the app.js this is alpine.js and it is also showing me the size so it is very useful to know what will be the size of the extension that we are installing in our project now next extension is uuid generator and it's this uuid generator and it's very pretty simple package guys just go to the command palette Control shift p and hit uuid and just hit on generate a uuid and it will just generate a uuid wherever the cursor is so let's say i want to generate a uuid at this place then i'll just go to the command palette and hit generate a uuid then you can see here guys it will just generate the uuid for us so it will be very useful guys if you want to add a uuid to a specific thing in your project now the ninth extension is sort json object and it's this extension guys and with the help of this extension we can sort a json object by various things for that let me go to this test.json file and here guys you can see here guys i have name email and phone but here the keys are not in alphabetic order now let's say i want to order these by alphabetic order i'll just go to the command palette control shift p and here i'll say sort json and you can see here guys there are a bunch of options but here i want to sort them by alphanumeric then here i'll just click on this sort json by alphanum and you can see here guys it is automatically sorted by the alphanumeric characters now the 10th extension is dot env and it is this extension guys and with the help of this extension dot env file will get proper syntax highlight so here guys let me just disable it for now and let me go to dot env file and you can see here guys it is looking very plain yeah everything is white over here but now if i enable this and you can see here guys there is syntax highlighting and here guys in many places you are seeing just plain white because i haven't added inverted commas for a string suppose let's say i add this inverted comma here then you can see here guys it is showing me these strings in the green color and this equal to sign is in the brown color and this true or a number is in red color so we can get a good proper syntax highlighting using this dot env package and it will be very easy for us to look into this file all these packages are not in a specific order so i'm not saying that the one that i have shown in number one is the best and that i am saying in the last one is the worst but they all are useful in their own way there is no specific order so that's it for this video guys thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one bye